to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. That's what we call cunningly devised fables, men's ideas. Let me assure you. If you listen to the things that you are being taught, there is no power in existence that will stop you from becoming what God has designed for you. Believe me. Believe me. I say it, you can think I'm arrogant. You, you are free to think whatever you want to think. See, the Bible says, for you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Except if what you are teaching is a lie. But if it is truth, truth was buried. After three days, it came back to life. You can't hide it for too long. We are not, see, let me tell you. You see, those who don't understand what we are doing think we are just arrogant people jumping. No, no. You see, Ba, this kingdom, when you hold this thing, you have held it. It becomes yours. There's nothing the devil can do about it. Look, look away from whatever is before you now. I, I don't even want to know what is there. It's, it's, it's a mirage. Honestly, honestly, it's a mirage. Hallelujah. Five minutes to Joseph becoming the prime minister. He still didn't know. He didn't know what he had held on to was walking. Although he was in the prison, he was walking. I'm on my way. On my way. I'm on my way. To paradise. up your voice in one minute and say lord i will be consistent i will hold on to this i will hold on to this from the depth of my heart and with everything i've got go ahead and pray it may not look like it now but there is no giving up there is no giving up the bible says in the end it will speak it's already speaking in the lives of many people. Surely there is an end, the Bible says, and thy expectation shall not be cut short. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Refuse to allow the devil minister lies to you. Listen. Refuse to allow the devil use your current situations. Please hear me. I'm ministering to you already. Refuse to allow the devil use the fact that you have not eaten this morning. Refuse to allow the devil use the fact that your rent is more than expired and they are about to throw you away refuse to allow the fact that there is a carryover before you or there is no job all those things are the devil's schemings to manipulate your faith and cheat you and deceive you into thinking the world is not working i assure you the devil is a liar he didn't just become a liar tonight he's always been that way there is a track record of him losing over the lives of those who trust god are we together every time you see people rejoicing you know most times we think people are rejoicing just because they have everything in place no they are rejoicing because they are believers believers of what believers of the word of god the truths written therein people are not just rejoicing because they have everything intact make no mistakes 
when you see people rejoicing they are rejoicing because they already know the end are we together yes there is a level of certainty and confidence that comes upon your life when you already know what the end will be it may not look like it but there is a god that can change can change lives hallelujah allow those who are laughing at you to continue laughing at you they need to laugh at you because one day they will be forced to swallow their words is it not the god of heaven we are serving are we together be courageous listen i want to strengthen before we start off tonight i want to strengthen your conviction it's called persuasion get to a point where you no longer need people to strengthen you and say look don't give up uh -uh. you must learn to prophesy to yourself and say i know this thing works and if it will take me 10 years i know god is faithful are we together i rather apologize to the world at the end of my life and tell them i believe they lie than to quit just because of some mediocres flying around carrying their own history of unbelief and rubbing it off on me to make it look like god is not faithful god is faithful say it god is faithful say it again god is faithful hallelujah praise the lord god bless you i want to challenge you very seriously tonight um what i'm about to share will change our lives as we know this year for us has been very strategic not only because of the prophetic word that is our year of multiplied grace and influence but i decided to dedicate this year by the leading of the holy spirit to really settle down and teach us the principles that produce results in this kingdom hallelujah if you follow through with all our teachings except for maybe even during miracle service all the teachings have been very strategic i i really want to the, the goal is not to impress us the goal is to really imprint something upon our spirits and we have been all together laboring in the world to search the principles and um one of the things that God has helped me to do, especially in life and ministry, is He has helped me by His Spirit to really lay my hands on the things that work in this kingdom. And trust me, I've explored all kinds of things. I have studied, I study a lot, I, and I'm very open-hearted towards the body of Christ. And so it has given me an advantage to be able to examine different perspectives I have studied the thoughts of many denominations, ministries, individuals, and um, I have also studied people who have been able to do so much for the kingdom. And the goal of that entire research is to attempt to reduce the laws of the kingdom to the ones that work. There are many principles that do not work. Are we together? In fact, they are not even principles at all. They are just opinions of people taught over a long period of time. And in loyalty to those who taught them, they have been accepted as principles. But they were never principles in the first place. Because principles do not have exceptions. They always work. Are we together? And so I've been sharing with us the things that really matter as far as our success is concerned. I know that many of us are all of a sudden coming into the awareness because we're beginning to see some results in our lives or in the lives of others. Let me tell you something about man. Man as we know, human beings. They hardly believe truths until it's almost too late. Are we together? results speak in the end so if you wait for results to believe truths you will believe too late are we together yeah the bible spoke about 10 virgins five of them the bible says were wise and five were foolish they were all virgins so what made the other five foolish they were waiting until they had the masters coming to verify that he was coming then they'll quickly get lamps the others say he gave us a word and we know he does not fail so they went to get extra oil let me tell you something what i am teaching us right now many of us five ten years from now 
you will get the same message and you will cry that you've had it in your laptop and with you for years you know why because when you see the results that will be in our lives and the life of all who believe it you will wonder why it never manifested in your life then you will run to seek answers you will pay for seminars pay to travel abroad and everything almost everything you will be taught you will find out that you had access to it years ago but you didn't believe it are we together you see to be carnally minded the bible says is death but to be spiritually minded he says is life and peace to be carnally minded that means ruled sensually if someone tells you for instance tithing is the way god opens doors for people you can argue it because you are seeing the person with 700 naira trouser 300 naira shirt and one rubber watch for 200 naira and say if, you, if it's working it should work for you and all of a sudden in one day you see that person change and you say what did you even say is the secret of wealth and he says i've told you before do not be part of those who will regret these truths the things you hear me teach are only discoveries they are not inventions they've always been there he says ask for the ancient parts are we together so cultivate a habit of believing the truth when it is taught i love you too much to mislead you if you cannot trust that the truths i'm teaching you will open you up now let me tell you something and i say this with every sense of apology many of us have loved ones and sincere people in our circles of influence who will listen to these truths that are being taught and will trivialize it and they will encourage you to trivialize it i don't mind them they don't know it's because they are enjoying that's why they don't know what you are passing through and then it becomes very bad if you believe it and say it's true oh, it's true she be apostle has eaten that's why he's talking like this me have i eaten if you develop that attitude of cynicism it's better not to come here because you will waste your time the bible says they had the word listen to me just like we did huh but it says the word did not profit them why not because the word was not powerful it says not be mixed with faith in them that had it brothers and sisters i give you a guarantee with my life if you believe these things i'm teaching you you will rise to a point they would think you are using charm just believe these truths even if you don't understand it believe it and trust the holy spirit to help you you've got to believe something in your life and you've got to believe someone you can't argue with everybody for some of us every man of god has problems are we together how are we sure that this thing there must be more they are just hiding the one that is the main one and just said no this is it it says that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top i believe in prayers i believe in prophecy but i believe the greatest way to strengthen people and give them confidence is to open them to the the walking knowledge the revelations the mysteries like benga shared that will hold you so that you don't just have to run and look for apostle and say ah if he's not around what happens to you then you die no you can hold on to these principles because i assure you the world system is not going to get any better if you are trusting the world stop wasting your time the bible says for darkness shall cover the earth he says and gross darkness the people amen We've inherited too much nonsense from our loved ones and God is changing us. God is lifting us. You see, and the beautiful thing, and I thank God and I pray that it remains a signature of this ministry and my life is one word, balance. Everybody say balance. balance. I think, sadly, over 90% of well-meaning preachers, this is where the devil cheats them imbalance one of the things the lord taught me as a secret to a very remarkable ministry is balance there are so many men and women of god scattered around this nation scattered around the nations of the world anointed people great people but where the devil cheats people is when he he 
pushes you to a point of imbalance and you stop there and then you are not open to the other dimensions of the kingdom by the grace of god what you will get in koinonia is a balanced diet are we together we will not teach you on prayer and throw away prosperity we will not make you rich and make you foolish the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them so we will not make you wealthy from a carnal standpoint no why choose a few when all of them were meant for you are we together so that imbalance of choosing a dimension me i choose prayer me i choose the holy spirit me i choose power me i choose money this one will say me i choose relationship me i choose job and employment me i choose education no they are all different sides of the same reality that imbalance if you are a pastor here make sure you don't jump into just throwing away truths because you do not understand agreed there are perspectives dimensions that god reveals to us every man of god cannot do everything and you must admit it and in admitting it open up to the members so that they can open up themselves to the areas you do not have don't trivialize what is not working in your life that's what most pastors do poor pastors tell you just focus on god and forget about prosperity rich pastors say it's not all about prayer 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 and the, you know all these 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 imbalances end up making people weak we mock ourselves the key is to handle the keys of the kingdom the bible says and i will give you the keys say keys not just a key and i've told you again and again and i will repeat it here you cannot take one truth in the kingdom and expect it to cover for another one you do not know prayer for instance will not cover for tithing tithing will not cover for prayer are we together yeah character will not cover for lack of anointing i'm a good person it will not raise anybody from the wheelchair you still need to be anointed and the anointing will not cover for lack of character are we together all these are components in the kingdom designed to make the believer complete it is for this purpose the bible says in ephesians 4 from verse 10 that he gave unto some apostles and prophets right and evangelists and and pastors and teachers why for the equipping the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints being matured will now do the work of the ministry that all of us together as a family will come into what the bible calls the unity of faith right into the perfect man the fullness of the measure of the stature of christ we become so matured we are not tossed to and fro just by any wind of doctrine and the slight of men so you are receiving something that is a sure foundation you are not receiving something you will cancel away after 10 years there are people who have gone ahead of us they have made the mistakes and they were honest enough to show us the scars they said look when you get to this point don't waste your time going around there is a door you can easily follow and it is from their scars that we have been able to summarize the truths that we teach the mistakes we have now made we will further fine-tune it and pass it to our children and say although i got it well in this area i made a mistake so when you get here pay attention so we expect our children to be better than us are we together yeah but when you now make the mistake of your forefathers you are you are really kind you are you are making it it, 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 it then becomes very bad they've made the mistakes correct it that's why i have very sincere honor for our elderly ones who sit down here and they are listening many of them as they hear these truths they wonder ah, i wish i knew this 20 years ago i wish i knew this 30 years ago don't be like that that when you are 50 or 60 or 70 you now say i wish i knew this just 10 years earlier hallelujah praise the lord amen and amen so you'll be hearing one of those mysteries again tonight that will bless and lift us when the lord put this in my heart um it's one of those teachings that i have to pray for myself before coming here 
remarkable and it will change our lives. How many of us want results in our lives? Let me see your hands, truly. Are we together? God bless you. We don't serve God, we don't love him, and we don't seek his presence just for results. How be it? In the kingdom, the consolation to your Christian experience is that sooner or later, there be evidences that become testaments of the fact that what you believe is true. The end of faith is a manifestation. Jesus caused the fig tree because sufficient time had been given to it to produce. And it was taken from the soil and not producing anything. And so Jesus caused the fig tree. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, bless us tonight. Change our hearts in the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. My heart is open. I'm a receiver. The word of God will bless me. It will change me. It will set me apart. In the name of Jesus. Tonight I'm teaching on the subject of love. And I will be showing us how walking in the love of God is a key that will grant you access to every other thing in the kingdom. Are we together? Now please, don't, don't trivialize what I'm sharing. Generally speaking, in the body of Christ, every time we talk of love, we give it a very feminine um, expression. Whenever we talk of faith, it looks masculine because faith requires forcing mountains to fall. The mountain, if there is no way you bulldoze it, you call it breakthrough. And people say faith. So every time we say faith, the men square up and say, this is us. I mean, it's like a gym. Faith. When we talk of love, they just shut down and say, let's, let's allow the ladies catch up with love. But then you will be learning from tonight that the most powerful force on earth is love. I want to show you a key that will render Satan helpless. A key that will turn every challenge in your life to victory. A very powerful mystery. For many years, in fact, my name even means that. Selman means the way to love. But I've studied so much about love, but it was only in recent times God began to open me up and show me the depth, the riches, the unfathomable dimensions, the advantage a man can have over situations and circumstances when we walk in love. Say amen. amen. The subject of love is one that, psychologically speaking, is a very nice subject that we love because every time we talk of love it gives us an idea of peace an idea of joy an idea of serenity and um, nobody wants to live in an environment where there is no love we have all kinds of definitions and ideas when i mention love to many of us we mean affection to many of us we mean sacrifice to many of us we mean god to many of us we mean brotherly kindness and a sense of benevolence and brotherhood but I'm going to be guiding us towards a common thought. I want us to really examine it from the perspective that I'll be revealing to us. Praise the Lord. Very, very, very important. There are many things the Bible has to say about love. Scattered from Genesis to Revelation, especially in the epistles. The gospels and the epistles contain the highest thoughts on love. Jesus himself speaking about it. And then Apostle Paul admonishing the churches about love especially the church in corinth apostle john too john the beloved spoke a lot in his epistles about love and and there are so many things that the bible says about love but then i want us to consider three very important things that the bible has to say about love praise the lord this message will bless you tonight the first thing the bible lets us know is that god is love say after me god is love Shout it one more time. God is love. It's very interesting because the Bible does not say 
God has love. It doesn't say God possesses love. It says God is love. Hallelujah. The first point that I want you to know tonight is that God is love. And the meaning of that is that the measure of your love life is also the measure of God that is finding expression in you. The measure of your love life is the exact measure of God that is finding expression in you and through you to others. God is love. Absolutely important. First John chapter 4, please help us. First John chapter 4 verse 8. We're going to look at um, four verses. We'll look at verse 8, verse 16, and then 20 and 21. First John chapter 4. Let's look at the epistle of John chapter 4 from verse 8. Then we'll jump to 16 and then 20 and then 21. Everyone please read. It's projected. One to read. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Uh-huh. For God is love. Let's just hold on here. It's, it's very, very instructive. It says he that cannot love, no matter how he claims to know God, he does not know God. Are we together? Your knowledge of God is not even measured by how much revelation you have. Listen. Your knowledge of God is not measured by how much Greek and Hebrew words. The apostle, and you know, John understood what he was saying because he was the apostle of love. The beloved. Are we together? And here John is saying, if you want to know your measure, the measure to which you truly know God, you don't check it by how much theological accolades you have or how much wheelchairs you've been able to lift up. He says the true measure of your knowledge of God is love love he says for god is love let's look at verse 16. verse 16. he says and we have known and believed the love that god had to us god is love and he that dwelleth in love does what dwells in god and god in him now please follow me very carefully the bible says whoever dwells in love it doesn't just say whoever loves whoever dwells in that realm where you cannot but love it says he dwells in god and god dwells in him are we together verse 20 and 21 if a man say i love god and hated his brother what is the verdict read it yourself so if Joshua Selman says, I love God and hated his brother, Joshua Selman is a liar. No matter how impolite it sounds, that's the truth of God's word. If you say, I love God, whether as a man of God, as a young man, as an old person, as a parent, whatever you are he says if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar he says for he that loveth not his brother whom he can see are we together he says how can he love god whom he hath not seen and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth god loveth his brother also 21 Okay, that, that's, that's it there. It says, he who loved God should do what? Love his brother also. Let me tell you something. I think this is probably one area where Satan has cheated believers more than anything. There have been areas where we have allowed Satan to take advantage, maybe in refusing to open up ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, in creating a lot of imbalance like i taught earlier but i think the chiefest of the tools that satan has used to destroy us is this understanding of god's idea and the relevance and the necessity
to love one another. In fact, Jesus said this. He says, by this shall all men, regardless of who they are, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. He says, when you have love one for another. Not when you pray in tongues. Not when you heal the sick. By this, this very act is the ultimate test that the love of God dwells in you when you have love one for another. Are we together? So the measure of your knowledge of God, the measure of your intimacy with God is the measure of the love you have. Not just for him, but your fellow people. Never tell me you love God when you hate men. Never tell me you love God when you love only those who like you. Never tell me you love God. You know, the interesting thing about it is God does not tell us the kinds of people to love. He tells us to love all men. It is absolutely logical to love those who matter to you. It is absolutely logical to love those who you benefit from. But the Bible's idea of love is that the closer you get to God, please hear me, all your praying in tongues, all your fasting, all your spiritual activity are like different channels headed to the same point to get you to that point where you grow and you are established experientially in the love of God. Are we together? So the first revelation is that love The measure of your knowledge of God is a measure of your love for people. There are very few Christians who really love people. There are many Christians who love power. There are many Christians who love ministry. There are many Christians who love ladies who they want to marry. Are we together? There are many people who love their business partners. There are many people who love their parents or their relatives. I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about living in a realm where nothing else can find expression in you outside of love. Some of us have so dwelled in hate, we do not even know such a realm is possible. And if possible, are there people living in such a reality today? Are we together? That's the first revelation that we need to have. God is love. And he that dwells in love, dwells in God. Nobody can say, I love God and hate his brother and hate his sister. Regardless of what the justification for the hatred is. The Bible says, he that does not love his brother, does not love God. It's as simple as that. The second thing I want you to know tonight is that the Bible calls love a more excellent way. Hmm. It calls love a more excellent way. There are excellent ways. And the Bible shows us many remarkable things that a believer can do in this kingdom. Give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read from, we'll read verse 31, and then we'll read chapter 13, verse 13. Chapter 12, 31, and then 13, verse 13. While they attempt to pull this up, okay, it's up, it's up already. Watch this. I hope you know, theologically speaking, that the church in Corinth, um, they were the believers who opened us up to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Are we together? Yeah. In fact, they did not even know that what was happening to them was called prophecy or word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Are we together? Or discerning of spirits. There was such an outpouring of the power of the Holy Ghost upon that church. People were prophesying. Manifold possibilities manifesting from people. To a point that it was even bringing chaos. You can imagine a church where the usher is as powerful enough to be called a bishop. Prophecies, healings, miracles. Paul had to come and observe what was happening 
And then by his apostolic grace began to write and guide them. And say, look, 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 look. Let me classify this and help you know that this and that and that and that. And the interesting thing is that after Paul teaches them about what we all covet, the gift of the spirit. We read books by Smith Wigglesworth. We read God's generals. Are we together? We run helter skelter searching for men and apostles and prophets and great people to impart upon us fresh fire as we call it so that we can do great things for the kingdom. But hear what the Bible says. After Paul gives them the whole exegesis of the workings of the spirit, he says, but covet what? Earnestly, passionately, desperately. The best gifts and then he tells them, I want to show you something. He says, and yet, even when you have what you call the best gifts, I show you a more excellent way. Are we together? Now, Paul is telling them, look guys, I know that. Have you seen people arguing, let's say people arguing uh, in primary school, maybe on a mathematical problem, and they are coming to say, no, 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 no one minus one is it cannot our teacher taught us and you are trying to correct the person but you know that even that knowledge itself is limited because if the person goes higher he will learn that there's something called number line are we together at that level he may not know that such a reality exists so if he writes my one minus two he will write it cannot and you will mark him correct paul says compared to what i want to show you even this gift of the spirit thing that you are arguing with if I show you this higher thing, you will almost throw away the gifts to embrace what I'm about to show you. It says, yet I show you a more excellent way. Let's read 13 verse 1 before we go to verse 13. Just give us verse 1, media, then we'll go to verse 13. 13 verse 1. Everyone read, please. One, two, read. And have not... Well, the word charity, there's the word love. I am become what? As a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Listen, the Bible says, though I speak with the tongues of men, utterance, you get to a point where you are such, you are such an orator. You can communicate in every language. You can communicate intellectually. And it says, even the tongues of angels, access to communications, utterances that are not of the earth. It says, as powerful as that is, there is no man on earth who has attained this state. But it says, even if you get to this state and you do not have love, from God's perspective, it says you are like a clinging symbol. Let's read verse 2. Maybe we'll read it down to verse 3 and then we'll jump to verse 13. Verse 2. 13 verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, our generation is looking for this desperately because this looks like the, the Sabbath day of ministry, where you get into the realm where you can prophesy. No matter what you know about finances or not, you'll be rich. No matter how organized, excellent, or the excellent you are, the prophetic will seem to cover up everything. So this is what we all look for. We fast and pray for it. I can't tell you how many people... Um, I remember a gentleman sending me a text some months ago and said, man of God. No, no, no. He said, uh, my father, my father, open my eyes. I said, I'm not a herbalist. I remember the text. I mean, I think it was after one miracle service. He said, open my eyes, you know. <laughs> you can imagine I receive all kinds of things from people. But he says, even if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries... The things we are talking about. And all knowledge. And though I have all faith, no man has attained this realm. So that I could remove mountains. Ah! It says, but if I do not have love, what are you? Now, when God speaks, it's important to listen. When God tells you you are nothing, just because you do not have love, pay attention to it. We all want to be something and God is showing us how to be something. He's saying these things you are seeking, they are only relevant when you have love. If you do not have love in the realm of the spirit, you are not small, you are nothing. Nothing in mathematics is zero. Correct? Zero plus anything is equal to that thing. Zero doesn't add to anything. Are we together? 
Zero times anything reduces it to zero. And he says, if I have all these great things, but have no love, I am nothing. Let's go to verse 13. It says, and now abided what? Faith. The faith that moves mountains. The hope that maketh not ashamed. And the Bible says, love. Replace the word charity with love. It says, these three are important for the relevance of a man. But it says, the greatest of these is what? Love. Don't say charity, love. The greatest of these is love. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yet it says, even with it, God is more pleased with a man if you are walking in love. And I'm not talking about loving God today. Many people do already. I'm talking of loving your neighbor, loving your fellow man. A subtle but powerful key that is responsible for the manifestation of God's possibilities in men. Love. Is the more excellent way. The Bible says this. Love is the more excellent way. The third thing I want to share with us tonight about love that has blessed me so much is in 1 Corinthians 13, same chapter, verse 8. And I pray that this revelation will bless you the way it has blessed me. Love never fails. Love never fails. Please look up everybody the first three words. One to read. Love never fails. Look up. When was the last time they taught you about love as part of the keys that can give you a fail-proof destiny? Whenever they are teaching you about fail-proof things, they teach you that tithing is a fail-proof key. Are we together? But nobody seems to talk about love. Yet, the Bible, look, even faith can fail. I hope you know. Faith can fail. Jesus himself revealed to us that faith can fail. He said, get deep behind me, Peter. Satan. And he says, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted... When you return back to faith, strengthen your brethren. Teach them that their faith can fail and that it is prayer that keeps faith alive. When you are converted, when my prayer works for you and you come back in faith, observe this and teach your brethren that Satan can attempt to sift them like wheat. Yet, the apostle speaking by the spirit says, love never fails. I show you a key that will empower you to never fail in life. If you walk in love and you love men, I guarantee you, you will never fail. If you are walking in love and you see something before you that looks like failure, keep watching it. Something is about to happen there. Love is a miracle that can turn everything around. Love never fails. Love never fails. If I do business in love, it will never fail. Marriage in love never fails. A believer that works in love never fails. There is something about love not that you cannot fail you can fail but the love component will make you not to fail it will correct everything and make you succeed love never fails there are so many people who want crowds pastors want crowds they admire men of god with so many crowds but they do not have the love component that authorizes God to bless them with such congregations. Oftentimes we want to use people just for our self-centered, egocentric lifestyle so that it will be on record 
that this man of God is not a small person. But then the love for them is not there. I'm not talking of love for God. I know we've settled that already. By the grace of God, this is a house where we love God. But I'm talking of love for one another and every other person. A powerful key. Some of the most offended people and loveless people on earth are men of God and Christians. They love God because they do not have a choice. But I'm talking of love for your fellow man. Are we together? Listen to this and paralyze the hands of Satan over your life. When I was preparing for this message, the Lord asked me to speak on the one key that takes away love from people. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. We will dwell, most of our teaching will dwell on what I'm talking about. It's called the spirit of offense. Write it down. We're going to discuss the subject of offense extensively. And you will see why for many of us it's almost impossible for us to walk in love. Everybody say after me the spirit of offense. There is a spirit. Look up please. There is a spirit, an operation of darkness that comes upon men and makes it difficult, if not impossible, for them to have love towards one another. And the Bible meticulously teaches on it. It's called offense. Are we together? The spirit of offense. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Shabakato superataya. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. It's projected as loud as you can. One to read. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and all discernment. Uh huh. That you may approve the things that are excellent. Read on. And without offense. How long? Till the day of Christ. God says that it is my prayer, the apostle praying, that your love will grow higher and higher while your offense diminishes until there is no more offense in you. Are we together? Offense is a terrible spirit. It's worse, it's worse than occultism. The word offense comes from the Greek word scandalizo. I want you to learn it. S-K-A-N-D-A-L-I-Z-O. Scandalizo. That's where the word offense comes from. And it means, very interesting when I was studying this, it means a trap. It means a snare. The word offense from the Greek rendition. The verb is scandalizo. And it means a trap it means a snare are we together so a man that is living in offense is like a rat that has been trapped you are in a snare you are in a trap you are unable to move forward you are unable to make a lasting impact you destroy your health you destroy your life and God cannot manifest his possibilities through you Let's define offense. We're talking about love. What is offense? The root cause of lack of love among brethren, believers, people in any society is offense. What is offense? Write this down, please. Offense is an emotional state. Offense is an emotional state or response an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure comma hot anger and outrage let me take it again and i'll continue don't put a full stop afterwards offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure hot 
anger, and outrage. Right on. Usually caused by the words and actions of people. Offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, hurt, anger, and outrage. Usually caused by the words and the action of people. Are we together? So offense is the name given to the emotional feeling, the emotional state that a person is left at. Are we together? By reason of displeasure. The moment there is displeasure, the moment there is hurt, the moment there is anger, the moment there is outrage, that state leaves you in a state the Bible calls offense. Are we together? Let me tell you a few very interesting things I've discovered about offense. Both being, uh, let me have two gentlemen, Oga Jordan, come, promise, come. Just stand, both of you, one here, one here. Thank you, guys. Anybody, just stand, one of you here. Watch this. If promise, listen, if promise offends Jordan, are we together? And Jordan gets very offended. Both promise the offender and Jordan the offended are both affected because the same thing is happening to them. I will tell you, both, write this down, being offensive and being offended has the same root and that root is self. Both being offensive and being offended comes from the same root. They are twins. Self. Our self-worth. Our self-esteem. And sometimes our self-centeredness. Write it down. Both, I mean, being offensive and being offended has the same root. Self. What about the self? Our self-worth. We are offended because we think our self-worth has been abused. We are offended because we think our self-esteem has been insulted. And then, most times, we are offended because we are self-centered. Ah, you will be blessed tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul are we together so jordan is here watch this as a person he has his what we call ego are we together jordan has his ego jordan has his sense of self-worth he believes he's not a small man he's not a small child and he's he's trying to protect his fragile ego his fragile uh, uh, what do we call it now? His fragile um, self-esteem. And here comes promise. And promise seems to disregard his self-esteem. Let me tell you something. Most times, people offend us because of the frustration they feel as a result of their own low self-esteem. So they respond to it by creating pain for another. So that, you see, he said misery likes company. Are we together? When people feel miserable, they get, why are you smiling? What is it about the smiling? Am I looking like a clown? You see, the person usually is fighting something. There is an internal conflict. It just so happens that mistakenly you were the scapegoat that gave that internal conflict expression. So it looks like you were the troublemaker, but it's not. Are we together? A father has been insulted from his office. They told him, Mr. Man, you have been underproductive and we cannot even believe that you are a master's holder. Did you buy this thing or did you really go to school? And he comes back with that anger. Are we together? And the tire of his car goes down and his little son is the scapegoat at that moment. Who will give that anger expression? And he says, you mean you didn't see this? 
you, you didn't see this and he starts slapping the boy and you know that that offense listen it was never about tire it was about a man whose ego had been insulted and he was looking for a prey to vent it out and it so happened that that young boy was the scapegoat the helpless scapegoat who gave that offense expression are we together yeah have you seen people who get angry and are talking and ranting and shouting at you and at a point you say, calm down. What exactly is the problem? I don't even know honestly. I don't know again. Because the, it was not constructive. It was a rambling, like going around circles. A venting of anger. And then they cry. Usually when they cry, they now calm down. And you say, what exactly is the problem? You say, see, my family, things are not going right. But you just told me I ate your food. So it was never about the food. It was a bad news that collided with food issue to find expression. Listen, both being offensive and being offended all come from the same root, self. Learn this. I learned this and it delivered me. Are we together? Self. If I think I'm a man of God, great man of God, Joshua Selman, and all of a sudden jo Jordan comes and seems to trivialize, trivialize my ego, I now turn and say, Jordan, do you know that, do you know that I'm not a small person at all? You see that? Jordan may trivialize me because he feels by doing that, he will reduce me and then feel high and me i'm trying to fight him to say no no matter what you do i'm the boss here are we together yeah listen learn this key and you will watch yourself rise you will you will look like a spirit walking upon the earth let me tell you something we are largely self-centered people you can call it selfish this is an uncomfortable truth, but if you listen to it and your heart is open, God will help you and deliver you tonight. Are we together? We are largely self-centered. So every time things are not done, the foundation of offense is disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you are angry. You are resentful. I expected this guy to come and tell me thank you. Jordan, that was nothing. I borrowed you 200,000. Now you have become a millionaire. You are looking at me as if we are mates, Abby. Disappointed expectations. Are we together? This guy has been roaming around me. He's not saying anything. He's blocking others from seeing well. And he himself is not saying anything. I'm going to confront him today and say, Bros, what is it? If you are not doing anything, get disappointed expectations. I helped this person. We did this business together. In my mind, I was thinking it's chop by chop and now he has left me. Offense. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you stand a chance to be offended. It is not unusual for offense to come. In fact, in Luke, I think at Luke 17, I hope I'm right. Give us Luke 17 verse 1. I think Jesus said something there. That offense will always come. Luke 17. You can sit down guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aha. I'm right. Go ahead and read it. One to read. He said to the disciples. It is impossible that no offenses should come. Stop there. Jesus himself is saying look. For as long as you are walking upon this earth, the opportunities for offense will come every day, every time, any time, at all times. Are we together? Because your expectations will be disappointed here and again. You will pay the school fees of a child and he will return back with a result that they will ask him to repeat. And then in the PTA letter, they will say they need to see you personally. Are we together? Then they will tell you the school fees has been increased from 50,000 to 75,000. And the boy has returned back out of 50 people in the class. It was 46 or 47. 
Then if you ever see him playing football, what happens? Pain. Offense. Are we together? Mm. You got somebody to work for you, maybe a house help, or somebody to work for you, or in a business, your secretary, and you say, type this letter, I need it in the next one hour. And after one hour, you come and see the lady calling a guy, and, and then she says, oh, sorry, 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 my madam is coming. You feel like slapping the person, and you say, how much is this guy going to give you? We are about to lose something because of your carelessness. Offense. Jesus said, it is impossible that no offense should come. One key to overcoming offense is to know that they will always come. Don't expect them, but prepare for them. Please look up. I have seen pastors who cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball. They love God, they fast, they pray, but they cannot look at themselves. I have even seen, do you know there are husbands and wives that cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball? They don't even stay in the same city. How are you? Happy birthday. I hear today is your birthday. I see if you didn't marry her. He said, yes. How are you? How are the children? I hope they are fine. Ah, is that Junior in the phone? Let me talk to him. Junior, how are you? All right, bye, 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 bye. And they drop the phone. Offense. You ask them what happened. They say in 1997, I saw one man with my wife and that day I said, me. You see, offense. Let me tell you something. The moment the devil wants to destroy you, Listen, please. He sends offense like a guy toasting a lady. If you dare say yes to that offense, you are in trouble. The strength of Satan is offense. Are we together? Every time the devil plots witchcraft, he uses offense like the battery that activates the bomb. You know how you put bomb and the remote control? You stand somewhere and blow the place. That remote control is offense. You finish praying and the answers are about to come. That is exactly when you finish praying, somebody baths with your water. You say, ah, who am I going to kill today? Who am I going to kill today? My hands are shaking. Somebody hold me. Call police. Offense. Have you not noticed that it's exactly when a miracle is coming that offense comes? Your husband, who has been a nice man, all of a sudden now tells you, look, I, I just want you to know that we are sowing this house to a church. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. It was me too. It was the Holy Spirit. It was so hot in my spirit. We are packing out by tonight. And you are saying, what, what in the world is going on here? Offense. Don't laugh. When you just think status is changing, they just say your result has been placed. And you ask your friend, what did I get? Say, honestly, me too, I just checked my own. You know that there's trouble. They don't want to be the ones to tell you what is there. <laughs> Say, me too, I checked it in a hurry. Even me, I'm not clear about my own. Just, just go and check. Offense. Are we together? Mm. Offense. There are so many ways the devil destroys us. I was preparing to go and take my bath and the Lord showed me a vision that is very interesting. And I said I will share it with us. You know how women put towel when they are going to bath? Just at the chest level here. I saw chains on people, like hands were lifted. They couldn't come down because of the chains. And that's how people were moving. They couldn't do anything much. And then I said, ah, Lord, what is this? I thought maybe God wanted me to minister to people. And the Lord said, I'm still adding to your message. That's how offense is in the spirit. They cannot move. They cannot do anything. Their hands are tied. Their hands are bound. A woman could not kill John the Baptist, but offense killed him. I hope you know it was offense that killed him. He was angry, locked up in the prison. The man who commissioned Jesus to ministry now sends a few disciples because there were, there were a few loyalists that refused to follow Jesus. And I'm sure they'll come to John and say, John, I'm with you. You are in this prison and I'm with you. Do you know how Jesus is enjoying at your expense? You are here suffering and he's there riding on donkeys and so on and so forth. And at a point, John could not take it again. And John said, please go and ask this guy, are you the Messiah? 
You see, offense makes you stupid. You will do and say and be things that you will be irritated later on. Are we together? He said, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? Look at how Jesus overcame that offense. Jesus would have said, really? Tell John I'm coming. Let me show him that the fact that he baptized me doesn't mean I'm an idiot. Don't ever talk to me like that. I'm the son of the living God. No. Jesus politely and gently prayed. And notice what Jesus said. Blessed is he who is not offended. Because he knew what John's problem was. After he healed the sick, he said, "Uh uh-uh. Don't be angry with John. The devil wants to join me and John together. Let me tell you how Satan takes away destiny helpers from your life. Offense. People who you have been friends with for 10 years, the 11th year when the miracle should come, Satan will scheme something. Are we together? Yeah. A man of God who has blessed your life so much. The last service, something will happen. You expected him to call you and prophesy to you and he ignored you. And he just said, this is it. This man, I don't even know whether he's born again or, or what. That thing, they are saying that he's using charm. I'm beginning to reconsider it because ah, I'm here, I'm looking at you all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it was my, my sister also last year or so. One time she said that I didn't used to prophesy to her. And um, they made up their mind that they were going to pray. And I think she was jokingly telling me that time, her and one of their friends, that if I call any name that sounds like her own, whether it's not her own, she will just come out. Because she has discovered that that's what some people do during miracle service. They just come out and they say, Why are you here? And since they are here, they don't go back. Say, I will come out to and stand offense offense is the root of bitterness offense is the root of resentment write it down these are the fruits when a man lives in offense you live in bitterness you live in resentment you live in unforgiveness you live in hatred Are we together? Listen, I used to think this is a very, you know, the interesting thing about spiritual growth, Ba, the higher you rise, the things you consider trivial, you will find out that they are the pillars upon which your relevance is hinged on. There is a level in your life, Satan will no longer try to use women or money or all these things to destroy you. By grace, you would have overcome that level. And you would think you are free. John the Baptist, imagine if a lady just cat walked to John. John says, are you joking? I ate locusts and wild honey for how many years? I'm about to die. It's you that will come and do the... No, 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 no. And so he used offense and he destroyed him. Do you know a time came when Satan was finding out how am I going to destroy the church? Then he looked for the two chief apostles. Peter and Paul. Are we together? And he was going to join their head together offense to the end that the gospel be sabotaged are we together one time paul wrote a letter about a gentleman called onesimus have you read it pleading on his behalf because his master was offended different things had happened please hear me offense is a trap By Satan to rob you of your joy, to rob you of your peace, to rob you of your advancement, to rob you of the power and the glory of God. A preacher can never preach to people he's offended with. Imagine that I come up here and I say, you people are not sowing into my life. You don't even care whether I'm eating or not. And immediately I'm talking, somebody's phone rings. I say, who are you? Stand up. The church suddenly becomes a military cantonment because I'm offended that you are not sowing into my life and now I'm venting that anger. There are many offended pastors. There are many offended assistant pastors are more offended than pastors. There is even a Nigerian film about that. One Mount Zion film. I watched it and it blessed me in no small way. Because the assistant pastors believe the pastors are chopping alone. They are laboring and the money. And they may be right. But there's still no room for offense. 
in any way offense does not bless the victim you have to learn this and this is more so for ladies let me tell you how you will know listen let me tell you how you will know that you are free from offense or you are buried in offense the ease and the speed to which you get insulted and you react to the things that happen to you right is how much you are vulnerable to offense there are people who get angry every time as you are right now in koinonia there are people already frowning their faces because the person sitting near you is looking at every jotting you are writing and you can almost say bros are you deaf I'm laboring to construct my points and you, you just allow me to labor and you are listening and you write it. Offense. Are we together? Immediately after the grace, another episode, entering the bus. Offense. This koinonia said, is he only, can't they add some more buses? Had they not seen that we're increasing? Then another person will turn and say, are you paying for it? Offense. Are we together? Then you turn to the protocol department. You are offended. They too, they are offended in you. Several people. Then someone goes to the media stand, harasses the people there. They harass him back. Look, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I show you a more excellent way. You can live a life of absolute peace. Absolute tranquility by choice. I made this decision and it has changed my life. Believe me when I tell you I cannot hate people. There's something God has done in me. I cannot hate. I know you would say, ah, people have not offended you, Jerry. You are joking. How would you expect that I'm a leader at this level and have not been offended? I have done things for people. People have done things for me. People have trivialized my benevolence in their lives. You cannot imagine. This is my boy that works for me sometimes, especially when I'm preparing for miracle service. Then he would do something that I just feel, should I play ball with this boy? What should I do with him? And then I just look at him in his innocence and I know that the love of God is at work in me. Has your wife ever done something to you? Those who are married. And you just, you, your hand almost lifted and you just took it back. And say, ah, <laughs> what's that song we sing? Devil, I see near you. <laughs> offense offense is a cancer that destroys men there are many prayer warriors who cannot enter the anointing because offense will not let them enter watch pastors sit together and everybody is watching who would disrespect him everybody who is watching who would do this Oh, you came late, you sat outside, but apostle came late. They found a seat for him in front. What are you trying to say? Who is not anointed or who is more than who? Offense. It's like many of us are, many of us are like wombs that are ready to receive that seed of offense. Are we together? You are ready to take in. The moment the seed comes, you incubate it and it grows and it destroys you. I'd like you to shout, no offense. No offense. Say it again, no offense. No offense parents are angry with children children are angry with parents right you've heard me share a lot of things about my dad but i love my father with all my heart i cannot be offended with him no i love him with all my heart. The, the generation of men that whole generation the devil really cheated them he sold a mindset for them that they received so it's not their fault it's a wrong ideology. There are too many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that can offend us. From your roommate, to your food, to the restaurant, to your lecturer, to your boss, to your subordinate. Everything in life that has the propensity of disappointing your expectation can plant a seed of offense. But you must set a guard over your heart and make up your mind that I will not be offended let me show you one scripture and then i tie up a few things 
and then we pray. This is a simple but powerful message. Psalm 119, please. Psalm 119, verse 165. Psalm 119, verse 165. Psalm 119. I'd like us to read it together. Please look up. One, two, read. Great peace have they which love thy law. Uh huh. And nothing shall offend them. Hallelujah. God is talking about me. Great peace. Shalom. Great peace. Undisturbed. Uh uh. You don't get offended all around. Someone wore your clothes. Now, humanly speaking, that's very painful. Someone did something nasty. You kept your last meal. Someone came and ate it and you are angry. Listen, offense will come. I didn't say it may come. It will come. Even as I'm speaking right now, there are, you're going to have all kinds of reasons to be angry. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. But are you going to make up your mind that great peace I have. I love your law. I love your ways. And as a result, I will not be offended. Trust me. I have, I thought this was impossible until my life became an experience of it. You will never, I tell you this, you will never see me sit down with bitter hatred and I'm thinking of somebody. Let me tell you something. Do you know what Satan does to you when you are offended? He begins to plant in you ideas for revenge. The key, the proof that offense has eaten you is that there is a force that stimulates you for revenge. So Faustina did something to me and I sit down and I'm thinking, how do I hurt this girl? Now, please listen. Different departments. Protocol department, listen too. Because you guys work with people. And you have about the greatest of propensity to being offended. And you can think, next week, how do I do this? How do I do that? No, it's bad. Listen, let people see you and see the life of Jesus at work in you. Sisters, am I speaking to you? Don't say I'm like that, oh. Ha, you touch me, you touch fire. No, no. The fire is towards darkness, not your fellow man. Say, I will disgrace this girl. I swear, I will do something for this girl. She, she will run away with her head in this area. No. For a Christian who believes the Holy Ghost is at work in you, the question I want to ask you for making that decision is what is the role of the Holy Spirit in that decision you are taking? What role is he playing? You embarrass me, I will show you. Ah! Just because I'm silent, it doesn't... No, no, brothers and sisters make up your mind that you will master the law of love and you will see people sit down and plot against you and while they are plotting because love never fails their plot will be a waste ah put a charm for me on the road on 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 on, on the road as i travel and love listen listen the bible says the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest he dips his hand in iniquity. Quarter to shame, you see love bail you out. Are we together? Many crises in different areas. When the devil is about to spark crisis, he creates an occasion for offense. And that's the trigger. Believe me when I tell you this. Offense. Ah! Did you hear what they said about Ejimi? And Ejimi says, really? Jordan, it's me you are saying this to. Look, let me tell you something. Many of us live in a world that is not ex in existence. A world where you believe that every other person around is your kind. Nobody offends me. There are many of us who cannot be friends for two weeks. The lifespan of your friendship is two weeks. Anything people do, um sorry rose rose what's your name you don't know my name me how many times will i tell you my name you are calling me rose i don't know who that rose is but i get the message you have sent the message to me no wonder you are not faithful stupid boy rose abby i will find out who that rose is that's the end of that useful relationship that would have led to marriage listen listen 
Offense is a choice. I want you to know it. Walking in love is a choice. It has nothing to do with convenience. It's a choice. People offend me every day. Believe me when I tell you this. Every day. Every day. One time someone was ringing my phone around, was it 2 a.m. or so? Up to 30 missed calls, honestly. And then the person sent, I, 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 sent, I said, please, t a text message, please. And the person said, it's an emergency. And then eventually I picked and, and then it was a lady and she was laughing. She said, honestly, a lot of things have been happening in my life and I want to share it with you. After five minutes, I found out that this lady was not saying anything constructive. I was so sad because I was in the middle of a deep meditation. Something was landing solid from heaven. This lady just cut short that flow. And I gently sent her a text. I said, please, next time, um, it's important that you, you know, learn this and that and that. And she just sent me a reply, thanks. <laughs> let me tell you what you would have done. You will call back immediately and say, see, let me tell you. Uh -uh, I'm the one who called you. Just allow me. Look, that if you do anything again, I know where you are. We have are protocol that work with police. Uh, what is all this? If you want to throw me down, God has kept me for many years. You are the Jezebel that wants to throw me down. Let me tell you, your plans will fail. I'm even rebuking this. offense is God helping us this is where we betray our loyalty to Jesus because so many people find offense little things spark offense even during prayer you are praying and somebody is just shouting and you look and say what is this now if you are praying stand there then you continue Sha -ba 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 -ba. they ka ba 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 Listen, gentlemen, I don't have only two eyes. Trust me. No. Offense. Are we together? When you make up your mind that you will not be offended, you have given Satan a blow that he will never recover from. Oh, hallelujah. That emotional state that has come as a result of what Satan has done for us. There are men of God who are very anointed, but their offense can be bad. They can be angry. They can stand on stage and I mean just lash it down at members and you know that this anger, this venting of anger is personal. Look at me. Let's examine for a few minutes the things offense has taken from us. And the things it has given to us, if any. Number one. Offense has destroyed godly relationships. I don't mean love relationships. Quality destiny relationships. Quality destiny relationships. There are many of us, the way we are now, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be long married, but offense regardless of how many times you have been delivered in miracle service the demons have left but that gate of offense has remained please hear me i've told you this offense is a sign that you are self-centered so if things do not happen your way at your time at your pace right offense is not rebuking people and correcting things and straightening things Offense is bitter anger and rage. The emotional frustration that is communicated as a result of disappointed expectations. I learned early in life that people are not me. I'm, I'm quite well. I don't think I'm a perfectionist. I just am a thorough person. And when I see people who do not do things thoroughly, most times it troubles me a lot. Especially if they are complacent in mediocrity. I feel they are not taking advantage of the truths they are learning. And most times I will press it down on them. Are we together? But never to be offended. I created a strategy to use my disappointment as lecture halls. Every time I'm disappointed in people, instead of becoming a boxer, I become a lecturer. 
Are we together? And so I just turn and I tell them, okay, look guys, next time you do this, next time you do that, is the antidote to offense. There are many lovely ladies in this place whose destiny has been shot. Not because of witchcraft or whatever. Offense. You are angry at everything. And friends, you must summon the courage to calm people down and remind them that they are Christians. Don't endorse people's offense. Are we together? You never remind me of my mistakes. But you show me my destiny. What an awesome God you are. You're an awesome, awesome God. Listen. When you remember what Jesus has done for you and how he forbears with you, you will hardly have the time for offense. There are marriages about to shred themselves to pieces. 20 years of marriage, 30 years of marriage, now with grandchildren, but offense is stepping in. There are business partners who have been long-standing men and women of loyalty. They have survived every kind of storm, but offense is about to patch them away. I have seen great friends. Friends that you know God joined them together. Satan used offense to scatter them. Are we together? Yeah. Anything you do that is not in love, I assure you, you will fail. Please hear me. I assure you, you will fail. Do not say we are like that in our family. Do not say the village where I come from, everybody plus our traditional head is like that. Do not say my pastor is like that. I, I got that anger from him. Even me, I'm, I'm a better version of himself. Wait till you see him. That he's a pastor does not mean his offense is justifiable. Please listen to me. The fact that we are men of God does not make us perfect in ourselves. We are still growing. It's called an election of grace. If we are not arrogant to admit we are growing, then we implicate ourselves. Are we together? Koinonia, listen to me. If you want to be a man and a woman of influence, you want to host God's glory and power, you must love people. And the grand key to loving people is to know that the opportunities for offense will come every day. Every day, without fail. Are we together? I was on my way coming and... While I was going out, someone just passed and looked at me and I saw the way he just frowned at me and hissed. Kilo day, what is my own now? I'm sure he probably saw what I was wearing and he just said, Nigeria, dollar is going down, you are trying to see. Let me tell you, there are many easy ways to be offended. One of it is at the success of others. Are we together? Somebody you know does not earn money and God just opens the door for favor. And she wears a nice hair. You just look and say, huh. a lot is happening in this koinonia. It's only God that knows what is going on. Even people who don't have money, things are happening to them. Both the one God is doing and the one that... You see, all those statements of sarcasm are expressions of offense. The moment you are offended, you begin to look for loopholes in others. Because you are looking for loopholes to trivialize what they are becoming. Are we together? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we banish offense. We banish offense. Look, free yourself from offense so that Satan will not have anything to hold on to you for. Whether you insult me, whether you do whatever to me, no problem. God bless you. If I'm sad, I go to God, I cry out my life to him and I give him all the praise. Are we together? Otherwise, you will hate people. A time will come you will develop a sense of resentment for everybody. Then you will finally hate yourself and commit suicide and die. You will hang yourself and die. The hospitals are full of people under different kinds of tranquilizers responding to offense. They are in the hospital and the man's wife calls and his, his BP just goes up. Because he says, that's the woman, that's the witch, that's the idiot that is responsible for me being in this hospital. 
If she off that gas, it will not burn my face. Let that woman not come to greet me. People have died just because they saw people. Let me tell you, offense is worse than malaria. It's worse than HIV. Because the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. Are we together? There are many pastors whose true ministerial potentials cannot come to bear. Because the moment they stand on stage, five minutes, their communication is pain and offense. Are we together? Yeah. At one time I was advising a man of God who was fighting with another man of God. And he said, honestly, that the day they will invite them for the same meeting, that what he's going to do to that person was telling me, I kept quiet and I allowed him. And truly, the other person really offended him. What he did was very bad. And I told him, I said, but will you win that? We said, Apostle, mm, don't come with this thing. Me, I'm telling you, I will do it. I will do it. And I looked at him. I said, you are saying this thing before the God who will keep you alive till that day. You are offending him as you are saying that. Yet his love for you will keep you till the day you will perform that wickedness. You are planning that tomorrow you will kill somebody. And you say, oh God, protect me as I sleep. I will wake up tomorrow and this will come. While you are praying that prayer offending the most high and trivializing his creation he protects you you wake up in the morning and say thank you jesus let me tie my wrapper let's go to the neighbor's house and and let let me tear this woman and let her know that i'm not weak when i think about what the lord has done in my life i cannot but throw away offense we are going to pray seriously tonight i'm stopping early because we are going to pray are we together when you overcome offense sisters i want you to pray twice every prayer will be praying once because that spirit must die this night say amen, amen. offense love never fails it's a secret of land if you look at me today and you say joshua selman i promise you i will destroy you let me tell you what satan does for that prophecy to work offense needs to be triggered if offense is triggered meaning i look at you and i say really you want to destroy me you have drawn the line offense the moment offense is ready to detonate that bomb boom and two of you will die that's the painful part so the moment you say that i go back and i say no i love this sister i love this brother lord i love oga jordan He's done something stupid, but I love him. And while you are saying that, your entire flesh is saying you are joking. I don't agree with you. And you tell it, remain there. I'm speaking. You must conform. Listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to beat your body down and force it in alignment and in obedience. One of the greatest way to walk in love is to verbalize it, calling the names of the people who have offended you. Oh, I love my music director. He shouted at me yesterday, but I love him. I love him with all my heart. I love him with all my heart. We are a team. Oh, the protocol took my seat and they gave another person. No, I refuse to be offended. There is love in this ministry. I love the protocol. I love Shadrach. I love all of them. And the devil is saying, do you really love the pain that is killing you there? That's how you get it out. Listen, every plot of Satan depends on offense to be triggered trigger it you've been triggering a lot of things in your life through offense a brother calls you and he says see is it because i'm trying to ask you out that you are behaving like this okay let me tell you now there are many other ladies better than you don't even come near me and you, you now look and say ah this guy no i love this person your friends will say that's how you keep doing mumu and be a failure everybody will be playing with you give it to somebody as a lesson let me tell you the day you are about to give it to somebody that's when satan will cheat you because he knows that you are not you don't give in easily now that he has gotten you to give in he will capitalize on it you will be sick you will be depressed everything will be destroyed in your life offense has taken away relationships number two offense has aborted prophecies offense has aborted prophecies it was never john's destiny to die he was a prophet that foran jesus christ but offense killed him let me tell you what offense has done to people number three 
offense has empowered the operation of witchcraft in the lives of people. Offense. You know why different spirits keep roaming around our families in spite of prayer requests, in spite of miracle service? I will tell you why. Because there is offense. Sister is fighting brother. Brother is fighting sister. Oh, this guy. He's the person who was, who crashed the car that we are using now. Would have been any money from it. There are many of us for years who have not spoken to our brothers and our sisters. And families that are polygamous listen to me polygamous families mothers have trained their children so although you and your stepbrother are in the same territory you don't see eyeball to eyeball they've not done anything it's an extension of a war we destroy we end that war tonight in the name of jesus when you love people who do not deserve it you become neutral to the effect of anything the devil wants to bring through them are we together look let me tell you i don't know how many troubles in this life i have been delivered from and it was not necessarily prayer it's my refusal to be offended i know what i'm telling listen to me the moment you refuse to be offended you will leave the devil bowing his head down because shame will be his lot for sure Koinonia, are you hearing me? Gentlemen, I'm speaking to you. Offense. After tonight's meeting, there are many of you that need to send texts to certain people and say, look, how are you? I just listened to a message and I want to tell you I love you. The person can send you a text and say, I rather love Satan than love you back. No problem. You won't just say, you see, this is why I hate coming for Koinonia. Apostle keeps making us look like idiots. Don't worry. I'm showing you a more excellent way. Be foolish and rise to a level where you become a leader. Do we love Jesus? This is what to do. Somebody did something for me one time. It was so painful. And then one time the person called me and said, please, I should help him with money. He's dying. As if he forgot what he did. <laughs> he said, help me, apostle. You are the only one who can help me with money. And I think at that time, someone had just sown some amount to my life. I think it was 300,000 or something. And the Lord asked me to give him everything. Everything. That's how I transferred everything to that person. He never called to say thank you. God is my witness till tomorrow. Now, look, let me tell you. If you ever tie your joy... To what people do to you you will frown your way to hell to hell not even to death to hell you will stop at death you will keep going till you go to hell i never listen listen i never bless people expecting anything in return from them i expect in return from god it's risky to depend on people for joy ah i've got peace in my heart Peace in my heart, peace in my heart all the time. I've got peace in my heart, peace in my heart. Sing it. Peace in my heart all the time. I've got joy. I've got joy in my heart. Joy in Joy in my heart all the time. Joy in my heart. Joy in my heart. Joy in my heart all the time. Listen. Choose to be joyful regardless of your external environment. Don't come out in the morning waiting for news to make you happy. You will live a sad life. Especially now that we're in July. The journey is already unbearable for people. Those who are already pushing on one leg and not pushing on their knees, you will be angry. Come out of your house in the morning and see how angry people are. A bus conductor is smiling at you right now. Madam, you they go. One minute later, he's insulting you. Just because you are not going. Are we together? The driver is angry with him and insulting him that he should enter. Let them go. 
You see people fighting because of five naira, ten naira. It's my money, even if it's five naira. Yes, it's my sweat, give me my thing. And they are fighting. Look, let me tell you. Life is too short for offense to be the code of your existence. You must learn to be happy. And in being happy, you offend many people. That's the sad thing. There are people who are angry. When they see you frowning like them, it's like we're a family. But they see you come, you are singing, oh God is faithful, you know, and they look at you. And they say, ah, what, what's wrong? What is all this? You are shouting too much. Keep quiet. Abba. And you are like, no, I'm just giving up. Please, go to church if you want to shout. You just leave them quietly. You already know that something is boiling. There's a volcano within their spirit waiting for expression. They insult you. You tell them, God bless you. Say, Apostle, should I really say God bless you? Honestly, say God bless you. Trust me. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Ah, you are suddenly trying to be a Christian. When you were eating my food yesterday, you are even saying God bless you. I was in Koinonia too. I heard what Apostle said. Let me tell you. Ah, God bless you. Leave them there. I'm teaching you very relevant things. Because Satan will test this knowledge you are hearing. Some of you this night. As we are rounding up. Just we are rounding up Koinonia. As you are going out, somebody will just come trying to greet someone and just push you to the wall. And the moment that happens, just remember offense. It takes from me and never gives anything to me. It takes relationships. It takes graces. It takes anointings. Offense has killed businesses, has killed people, has destroyed lives. There are many ladies here, no joy, no peace. You are looking older than your age. You are angry with everybody, including me. Angry. What exactly is the reason? Me too, I don't know. I'm just angry. Everything is, I mean, this life self. Let me even kill myself. Ah, if it will reduce the, the, the trouble in the world, please, at least go. Let it be that you didn't finish your assignment. There are too many angry people. Did you know over 80% of people who call me for counseling are angry with somebody? Why? Apostle, do you know my elder sister can comfortably bring out 5 million and bless me? And she's watching me in this misery. Entitlement mm. mentality producing offense. You are angry. Your sister is enjoying. You are dying. She's five blood pressure free you are high blood pressure full at at age 22 you are already dying she's not do you know let me tell you something sometimes the people we are offended about are living in a world of joy beulah and hefzibah surrounded by the goodness of god and we are there dying you talk about them they don't know they will never hear it's, it's a bad business don't do that kind of business the business of offense is bad no returns whatsoever it will kill you ask doctors how many people get all kinds of sicknesses and diseases because there is no love please lift your right hand and say the love of god dwells in me and from today i love my neighbors i love my enemies i love my betrayals Oh yes, absolutely. You've got to love them. Put down your hand. God bless you. You will find a lot of people saying so many things. Somebody called me one day to gossip. Uh, somebody somewhere said something about me. And the person thought it would be a pleasant advantage that you call me. He called and said, Apostle, I, I, I shouldn't tell you this. Oh, but Kai, I love you too much. I have to tell you. He thought that it would be something impressive. And I laughed. I said, what is it? And he said, so, 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 person. said, A and B and C. And I just stopped him. I said, there's no problem. He said, you need to hear. I've not even said the parts that. This way. I said, no problem. It's, look, I took the pain. I promised him I won't tell anybody. But I, I said, Kai, no, no, no. I can't. I will do this and that and that. I told him, I said, no. You mean you don't want to hear? I said, yes. Okay, let me send you text. I said, no. He did send the text. I didn't even read it. I deleted it from my phone completely. Listen, you have a responsibility to keep your atmosphere offense free. If it means, if it means calling off certain relationships to live offense free, do it. Are we together? If it means playing a fool sometimes for things to just happen, no problem. Say, I will live offense free.
Say it, I will live offense free. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Listen, let me tell you the advantage of living offense free. Number one, tremendous joy. Not happiness. Joy. The joy of the Holy Ghost. Fully manifested in your life. This joy was so bubbling in me yesterday while I prepared for this. We had to play a song. I wish we could play it. The media could. Oh. Okay. You people suspected I would sing it or something. See them laughing. We had to play that song. I mean, I had to pause with the lecture. And we took a two minutes break to play that Dietrich Hedden song. Just because I was excited. Look, the world is already angry. Don't join them. They are angry about things they don't know. And when they see you happy, some of you, whenever you see people shout, you say, God, this guy said, they are noisy. What is all this? No. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Truly is our strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. The joy of the Lord. It's time for us to get that lack of love and that offense. Pain and rage that has come as a result of that kind of life. Sing it from your heart. The joy of the Lord The joy of the Lord The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first benefit is joy. Number two, the next benefit of an offense-free life is a tremendous dimension of spiritual power there is nobody i know who works in heavy dimensions of the anointing who does not work in love no it's impossible nobody i know i'm telling you this there remain at this tree faith that produces miracles hope that keeps men expectant and love, it says the greatest of this is love. And the antidote to a life of hatred and bitterness is to rid yourself of offense. The anointing. Number three, the third benefit of walking in love and walking free of offense is favor. Ah. Look, let me tell you, if you make up your mind to not be offended, you will, you will experience favor that will even make you afraid testimonies that you'll be afraid to share because you ask yourself will people believe this if i tell them he says i will walk a walk in your days right that you will not believe even if it were told you i will walk a walk are we together favor has closed away from our lives because offense drove it away offense In all my life, I think the last two years of my life have been the most favorable years of my life. And it was within these two years, God began to teach me this. It was during my retreat, God began to teach me. We didn't talk of power. We didn't talk of anointing. God says, son, you are stepping into a higher dimension of grace, higher dimension of leadership, and I will need you to know this. And the Lord began to teach me. It came with a new light. I was ashamed of myself and at how much I'm, I, I, I don't consider myself to be a troublemaker. But you know, leadership surrounds you with so many things that can cause pain in your heart. And I had to pray. I had to just pray and say, look, I love everybody. I love my family. I love Koinonia. I love everybody. And a tremendous dimension of grace came upon my life. And now I see favor after favor. It started like trickles of rain. And now it's coming in a way I cannot even stop. 
it's not all about prayer it's about true love as soon as i got down from the car there was one little girl she was watching me i think with her mother and another person immediately i dropped that's how she ran to me on a very good day i'll look at her and say hey, go, go back to your mother that's what we do to children and threaten them I gave that lady a big hug. I was almost bringing her here to come and sit down with me because she said she wanted to sit inside. I just said, okay, one auntie, one usher should help her. But I was going to bring that lady to come and sit down to give her joy and expression. Please say after me in the name of Jesus. The lifestyle of hatred. The lifestyle of resentment. The lifestyle of bitterness. The lifestyle of jealousy the lifestyle of rage leaves my life forever are we together before we pray we're going to do something are we together as we sing that song the joy of the lord is my strength we're going to get up and we're going to walk around some of you even need to go outside everybody is going to give everybody a big hug and listen listen don't stand up many of you like playing so your body is already itching we are serious here we are not playing games are we together don't be offended as you do it because i know that offense will happen some of you to be tested right away somebody will match you and be laughing and you are wondering say, ah, why are you doing this but listen there are people here you know you have not hugged yourself for weeks this night that's the night you are going to hug and you if they are coming to you don't do as if you are not hearing what i've been saying there must be forgiveness there must be love generous lavish love appreciate people if it's someone who has offended you i'm sorry yesterday i spoke something that was not good it's over it's over i mean it you are not saying anything that is negative and nobody is too big to practice this everybody is going to walk around ready the joy of the lord stand up move around five minutes for this the joy of the go ahead walk around those following us online hug everybody close to you every pain every secret bitterness let it go in the name of jesus christ celebrate everybody let that bitterness live your life let that pain live your life whether or not you know them tell them i love you i honor you we may come from different churches we may have differences in beliefs but i choose to be joyful the devil is a liar we must grow in love we must grow in love make sure you are greeting somebody Well, many of you cannot go up so just return back at least you have two neighbors your left and right give them a big hug i know you think we're joking but something is happening to people did you remember to hug the protocol department some of you don't love them look for them and hug them or you have to look for them and hug them no 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 don't come to hug me hug others hug others Hug Shedrach, hug the protocol department. I missed the boss last week, but I love you.
Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. From today, I declare that the spirit of offense will never find expression in my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray seriously. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love, it says I am nothing, a clashing symbol. Pray, shake it, take it, take it. No offense, no offense, no offense, no offense. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Say in the name of Jesus. I release everyone I've been holding in my heart. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every person who has offended me, I release them. Lift your voice and begin to pray. It's painful but pray. It's painful but pray. Release your father. Release your mother. Pray. Pray. You may cry, but pray. I finally release my roommate. I release that pastor. I release that church. I release that ministry. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm ready to move higher. No unforgiveness. I release them. They spoke a bad against me. It was a gossip, and I got to hear about it. But I release them. Genuinely, I release them. Sincerely, I release them. Passionately. Oh, I release them, I release them. I release that brother. I release that sister. I release that pastor that I cannot see eyeball to eyeball. Hallelujah. Is God blessing us? I tell you, I see a lot of things happening to people. Prayer point number three. The spirit of unforgiveness and revenge we are going to cause it. Because some of us right now, we are already plotting how to pay back. It's devilish. No! You never pay evil for evil. It says you overcome evil with good. Lift your voice and say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of unforgiveness and revenge at work in my life by the blood of Jesus I cast you out of my life. Lift your voice and pray. No revenge. No revenge. No unforgiveness. Shaba katalabadashi. Ebra katalaboshi. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for your friend. Every spirit of unforgiveness. Every spirit. Those online. Make sure you are praying with us. Those online. Make sure you are praying. Every spirit of unforgiveness every spirit of revenge planning to rejoice at the downfall of others planning to rejoice at the downfall of others I challenge you in the name of Jesus hallelujah hear me some of you are already waiting for bad news from your family members. Some of you are already waiting to, to hear that the rich people you are angry with, something has happened to their fortune so that you can rejoice. It's devilish to rejoice 
over the downfall of somebody you love. God is a God of judgment, but he's a God of love. Are we together? No anger, no revenge. Some of us, who knows that there are people here planning after koinonia. They won't even go home. They want to brand somewhere and go and flog out something. No, no. Revenge is for fools. He said, vengeance is mine. Say, yeah, the Lord. It's not yours. Are we together? Are we together? I'd like you to pray. You are going to ask the Lord to baptize you with a fresh love for people. Not just people you know. People that you develop an, a love and a sense of sympathy. That like Jesus, you can look at people like sheep without a shepherd. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Lord, compassion for people. Pastors, pray. Give me compassion for my members. I don't just want to be a preacher. I want to love people genuinely. Genuine love. Genuine love. Genuine passion. Genuine love. Genuine compassion. Genuine love for people. Genuine compassion for people. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We are praying. I want to speak to every leader here. Never use people. Love them and build people. Are we together? Don't use people and climb them like ladders to be relevant. It's demonic. I'm speaking to every pastor here and many who will be listening online. There are many pastors who are wicked. They climb members like ladders. Many pastors don't love their congregation. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Many husbands are selfish and self-centered to hell with their family for as long as it does not affect them. Many wives are selfish and self-centered. The children would rather not go to school for you to buy a new lace. That's self-centeredness. Many relationships are self-centered because they have to do with people who are always thinking myself. That's the next prayer point. Lord, kill selfishness. And I want you to receive it. Brothers and sisters, you will step into levels of the anointing if you keep offense far from you. Don't hear this thing I'm telling you and then trivialize it. And don't let anybody tell you this is, this is food for babes. You are joking. You are joking. When you rise in the spirit, you will find out that this is solid food. It can rob men of their dignity. It authorizes Satan to destroy men. Are we together? I pray for you from the depth of my heart that every spirit of unforgiveness and every spirit of revenge that is eating you up like a cancer and stopping you from manifesting and becoming all that God has destined for you to be, I command that spirit to live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whatever offense has taken from you, some of you have lost relationships. Very good good relationships that you may never get that kind again i'm not talking of love relationships good real meaningful relationships with people just because of weaknesses here and there some of us have lost opportunities god brought valuable people into your life but because of offense listen i want you to learn tonight that it is not all about you are we together ladies am i talking to you you have to learn this. I don't know who, who are those preaching all these rubbish messages all around and making ladies feel it is all about you. No, it's not all about you. It is about you, but it's not all about you. Are we together? So that, that attitude that makes you live in a kingdom where everything must happen at your terms. The moment your terms are compromised, you are angry. You are living in an illusion. It's children that live in that world. Are we together? I pray for you. The grace to be selfless. 
to also consider the pain of others the grace to be selfless to also consider how your decisions affect others i release it upon you in the name of jesus i release it upon you in the name of jesus i pray for you those of us who are easy to begin to hate people just one little statement you you find out that you are struggling with hatred it's like you are you are almost a sadist you can't find joy in anything the lifespan of your relationship with people is not more than two weeks something must come and you will fall to it i separate you from that kind of life from today in the name of jesus and i command healing for people here who have been so hot now i'm not denying the fact that when people offend you it can be painful many of you have carried these wounds for years tonight in the name of jesus as i pray for you that wound must heal right now i don't know who has said what against you or about you or towards you i don't know who has done what against you or about you or towards you you so resent the person the moment you see the person there is this arousal of anger let it die tonight in the name of jesus i release upon you the courage to make peace the courage to make peace the courage to go out of your way and make peace and i pray for you the relationships you lost i call them back into your life the opportunities you lost i call them back into your life the anointings and the graces and the dimensions of prayer and work with god you used to fellowship with that offense brought you down and you are now so carnal as if you never walked in that level of power i command a restoration for you every prayer life that has died here as a result of offense the moment you go to pray the devil brings memories of pain and you can't pray you are there three hours but you are not saying anything be free from me tonight in the name of jesus closely related to the spirit of offense there are many of us there is a spirit upon us if you don't gossip you cannot sleep it's not that you don't want to there is something in you is demonic if nobody has told you no now that is demonic you cannot be trusted with informations talking to you is as is as good as saying it in a radio station something keeps pinching you until that information leaves you let me tell you if you are suffering that thing here i want you to know it's an attack from the pit of hell especially sisters oh I, me too they told me oh don't tell anybody it's a spirit it's a spirit and it's killing you because god cannot commit a great man into your hands great men are great because of the secrets that they have you want god to bring a great man in your life and your mouth is running like tap god will not carry his precious son and put in your life same thing with gentlemen god will not carry his precious daughter and commit to you are we together there are some of us you want access to wealth you want access to organizations and corporations but your mouth gossiping backbiting your your is it's like you have this sense of sarcasm you always see something wrong in everything it's a bitter spirit five minutes into your conversation you are talking about somebody what you are saying may be right but do you not have anything better with your life i like you to in one minute i'm still praying for you but i like you to pray and say lord this spirit of gossip this spirit that makes me dash down my reputation let it live my life it has not profited me lift your voice and pray god stop trusting you with information about men's life you used to operate in the prophetic but everything you see you say you don't know what is sayable it is not worthy of being spoken pray our mouths have ensnared many of us you you have, you have sown seeds of discord friends good friends, good friends. you have got informations that are irrelevant I planted enmity between people it must live tonight hallelujah 
The last prayer point I'll pray for you before I make the altar call is that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that realm where you cannot hate, hear what I'm saying, not that you hate, you cannot hate, regardless of what offense comes, it's a supernatural realm, you don't get it naturally. Believe me, I know such a realm exists. I'm a leader. I'm open to offense per second per second. Life-threatening offenses. But in it, it says, Great peace have them that love the Lord. And in nothing shall, shall they be offended. I pray for you. May you exist in that realm. May your family exist in that realm. May your children exist in that realm. From today, I restore the joy, the joy that left you, the joy that left you, that opened you up to attacks from hell. Let it be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Still standing, I want to make an altar call. I want to make three altar calls at once. Please stand. First, those who have never given their hearts to the Lord, you came for koinonia tonight and while I was speaking, the Holy Ghost told you, you must make your ways right with this Jesus. You've heard about him. You've preached about him. You were raised in a family that talks about him, but you need him in your life. You can be around the things of God and not be born again. And in case you think you have been coming out here or anywhere else and you are not serious, you want to rededicate your life to Christ. And then number three, if you feel that there, there are certain, there is a spirit of offense and you think yours, you really need prayer. Honestly, you think that this bitterness is eating you up. It has destroyed you. I don't mean everybody. But you know yours is an issue that is a state of emergency. Join all these three people and come and stand here right now. Those for offense, don't be embarrassed. Stand this side and the rest you stand here. Quickly, quickly please, everybody. Those who give their lives to Christ, make your way to the front. Those committing their ways to the Lord, quickly. The devil is a liar. Shame the devil tonight. God bless you. Shame the devil tonight. Make your way to the front. Come to Jesus. Those outside, clear the way for them. Jesus is calling you. You're winning. You're winning. You're winning. Your destiny is about to change forever. I pray for you. So many people have been hurt. Listen. Some of you are supposed to be standing here. You may see some of these people standing and you don't know what they have gone through. Let me tell you, there are people who have gone through pain that only God can set them free from. Only God. There are people here who have been raped and it will take only God for them to forgive those people. There are scars. So don't you be the first to sit down looking and watching who is doing what. Uh -uh this few minutes is a time to mind your business and say Lord I mean business with you let me start with those who are giving their lives to Christ and rededicating their lives right say after me Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart tonight I declare that you are my savior you are my love I receive your love and I receive your light into my spirit I declare that from today I'm a child of God the hand of God is upon my life in the name of Jesus now I want to pray for all those who are here with all kinds of pains listen ladies and gentlemen I salute you I see some of our mothers here I know many families have gone through pain some of you are supposed to be here but just because you think you are embarrassed you are not coming out and I sincerely appreciate people. Some of you are crying. There's no point being ashamed of your tears. I may not know what story surrounds your pain. But it's time for you to be free from it. The Bible says a broken spirit dried up the bones. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I bring before you my pain. And I ask you to take it from me. I hand it over to you. And I declare that the grace to forgive the grace to let go is released upon me Lord Jesus I pray that from today the grace to love the grace to be joyful comes upon me 
in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for these lovely men and women who have come because they do not have the power in themselves to help themselves from this spirit of offense. I ask that you will help them tonight in the name of Jesus. I set you free from every pain. I set you free from every spirit. I command every devil right now that spirit of offense. I'm speaking to you. You are a spirit. You know my voice. I command you to let these people go. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I declare that you will not find expression in their lives again. Every heart, every pain gives way right now. God makes everything new for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now those who came out for the third category, God bless you. Just go back to your seat. And those who came out just to give your heart to the Lord or to rededicate your life, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. I see a few of you here. Please make sure you don't join those going back to their seat. Just follow that gentleman waving his hands and he will have your details. God bless you. Break them. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.